are such an asshole. Hello, children. I actually got to grab my laptop. I had to put the, I had economics. I actually had to dust off the old economics and math skills and logic. That's the hard part. The formulas are simple. Those have been figured out by men much more intelligent than me in the past, hundreds of years ago, if not thousands of years ago. It's the logic. It's like, okay, is this what I'm really measuring? That's the hard part about economics. Uh, <clears throat> David writes, hi, Aaron. Absolutely love your channel. Many hours of watching. Give me a price on you elaborating on the 4% rule for a global portfolio, robo-investing services. So in other words, going to be investing in a global index fund. The often cited rule only holds for U.S., Canada, Sweden, where I reside. I've been going down this rabbit hole myself, but have problems finding clarity. What would be the safe withdrawal rate? What would the safe withdrawal rate be for a global portfolio of any kind with all the world's indices represented? Dr. Wade Fau, PFAU, is at the forefront of research in this field among a few, but a surprisingly few references on this one. Central question for all early retirees regards David. All right, so before I get into the rest of this, let's talk about some general things about finance investing, particularly the 4% rule. The 4% rule is that you save, you, you calculate, you figure out, okay, what do I need uh, to live off of per year when I retire? And you're going to assume roughly 30 years, okay? And the 4% rule says, well, if you reverse engineer, you come up with this amount, you take 4% of that amount, the amount that you save up, and then <clears throat> you invested in a, I believe the 4% rule is a diversified, well-balanced portfolio of both U.S. Uh, S&P 500 in, uh, diversified stock fund and a diversified bond fund. Uh, if you do the 4% rule, it should last you 30 years. Okay, a little math of all figure out what that amount is. We take 4% of it and that should carry you through. So the example they give is a, um, a what was it? $1 million should be saved up, which is about right nowadays. Don't worry, Biden and Trump will make you all millionaires. You girls are wondering where the guys are making six figs. Don't worry, give it a couple more years. Six figs won't buy you a new Range Rover, but they'll, he'll have six figs. Um, Take 4%, that's $40,000 a year. You adjust that amount for inflation. Presumably your stock and bond portfolio increases enough to account for inflation. And on average, given the historical performance of the stock market, uh, you'll have about $0 the nanosecond you die. And that's perfect timing because then you leave the world nothing. None of your money goes to anybody. It's all you. You consumed it all. Now let's talk about all of finance particularly the 4% rule, but something important to know. This is a rule of thumb. I find it interesting and unique that a doctor, a doctorate in finance presumably is studying this. Um, the, and the reason it's, it's a rule of thumb is because there are so many variables in your life, uh, not to mention the stock market and the bond market. This is just a general rule of thumb to follow. And I, the, the, there shouldn't be a degree in finance. There really shouldn't. There just shouldn't be because it's all guesswork, especially when it comes to the investing side. I can understand analyzing the risk, but now you're starting to go into statistics, not finance. But everyone's like, oh, well, what if stock markets do? What if, do you control stock markets? No, you don't. Do you control the bond markets? No, you don't. Did you control what happened to stock prices? The past, what, 1881 is, I think, the longest going back S&P 500 data goes. Did you control what happened back then? No. Is that exactly what's going to happen in the future? No. I mean, if for any other reason you look at the quality and caliber of people in America we're raising now as compared to the 1800s, they're nowhere near industrious or hardworking, creative, or innovative. They're a bunch of lazy, whiny American little putzes. That's what they are. <clears throat> if anything, it's going to be slower economic and therefore corporate profit growth. So stop analyzing this. Just stop analyzing it, guys. It's a good rule to follow. You get enough money saved up. How much should I take off? 4%. And then you adjust for inflation there on out. And that money should last you a while. You should, especially if you're not working, especially if you're in retirement, you should be paying attention to how much is in your nest egg. 
And you want the ultimate uh, uh, academic point. What percentage of boomers actually saved off enough for retirement? 30%. I have a book linked below called Poor Rich's Retirement. I go through how few boomers actually have enough money to retire. Although now they're getting so old that they actually do have enough to retire because they ain't going to live that long. So they don't need that much money. Uh, so don't, do not apply a science to financial planning and retirement planning. So math evolved, yes. But what's more important is your financial behaviors. Did you save up enough for retirement? Did you spend less than you made? Did you invest early and often? Did you regularly contribute to an IRA or a 401k? Did you not buy a house you couldn't afford? Did you not buy cars you couldn't afford? Did you pay cash for cars instead of leasing and borrowing? Did you have less kids than you could afford? Did you not get divorced? Did you marry the right person? Those are way more important things that determine whether or not you're going to have a successful retirement, have enough money in the accounts than following some arbitrary, though good rule. I'm sure the guy who created the the 4% rule, heck, Jacob Lund Fister, Fisker, who writes uh, Early Retirement Extreme, he's the FIRE retirement guy. Can't recommend him enough. Even he'll tell you, well, yeah, it's just these are rules of thumb. And Jacob, he he did a more, if you get his book, or Early Retirement Extreme, he, he goes through the math, but that's still banking on the future. And if you majored in dumb crap and you got a master's in dumb crap, and you got $120,000 because you went to well, $120,000. You got a quarter million dollars of student loan debt at 40 because you went to some no-name law school. No no law firm picked you up. Uh, and then you got married. Then you got divorced. Now you got child support. I'll be honest. Ain't none of you retiring. You're going to work till you're dead, period. End of discussion. You know, and I will make the very damning accusation and forecast that okay we all like to pick on the boomers only 30 percent of them saved up enough money for retirement all successive generations and maybe not gen x gen x got bounced around a little bit they might have a little more resilience but millennials years and alpha oh no 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 you've had life on easy mode and you're even fewer of you are going to save up money for retirement your concerns and considerations about being lied to about going into debt for a worthless degree and paying gobs in rent i understand i uh, those are accounted for yes but this is an academic discussion we're having now, okay? So <clears throat> more importantly, following what rule, make sure you got good finance. It's, it's no different than your health. You know, if you're 65 and you're fat, overweight, sow, and now you're looking and you got diabetes and now think about amputating your foot. The, well, what do I do now? Like, I guess you get your foot amputated. I guess you salvage what miserable suffering life you got left. The planning was to not get fat in the first place and have good, healthy habits early on. Okay. So, same thing with finances. I don't know how many times I got to go over these rules. Don't have more kids than you could afford. Don't major in stupid stuff. Spend less than you make and don't commit crime. I would add to that for you men don't get divorced. Women, you want to improve your finances? Get divorced. But, but that's, <clears throat> oh, and for also men, do not only pay cash for cars. So you follow those general rules, you're going to be in the best position you possibly can be by the time you want to retire. And so, and, and link down below, I have poor, a link to Poor Richard's Retirement. I go through it, okay? And then I also have a link to my teachable class that's open called Achieving Financial Excellence. The book is 15 bucks, maybe. Achieving Financial Excellence is $99, which is not expensive given what's in it teaches you about the modern day concept and meaning of wealth. It's very avant-garde, very edgy, very frontier, very cutting edge. Astronomical units ahead of Paul Krugman with his Republicans suck. We need to tax the rich more. Okay. We're, we're a little bit beyond that. <clears throat> Dare I see it's, it's even past Thomas Sowell and Dave Ramsey and even Robert Kiyosaki. Mm-hmm. That's all that Cappy is in the front. I'm there with Captain James T. Kirk exploring the frontiers of financial planning. Actually, I do I do claim that. I think that is probably the most forethought. You can take that later, though. It's up to you. All right. So now let me pull up my laptop. Let me go through the guy's request. Let me get all my notes. Uh, so we go through here. So I said, <clears throat> and he's been very patient. I say, sorry for my delay, but I'll have to brush up on it because I'm only familiar with the general concept. I haven't studied it in terms of the efficacy with a global portfolio. 
Pitweek. Okay, so I said, all right, I pulled the numbers using global data, programmed a model, and actually got some really good data. But a lot depends on your specific financial situation, namely what age are you going to retire? How long do you expect to live after you retire? How much do you need to spend per year during retirement in USD or Swedish Krona? Uh, I could have something more practical. And then he says, uh, he's mid forties, would like to retire at 60, expects to live 30 years beyond that. So he plans to die at 90. He needs 240,000 Norwegian, I'm sorry, Swedish Krona, which is 24, that's a dime. Uh, it's uh, $24,000 US for the English audience. <clears throat> Net worth right now is $4.5,450,000. Apartment included, liquid retirement funds are 200,000 Norwegian krona. Uh, sorry, not Norwegian krona, Swedish krona. Some experts say you can withdraw uh, 45 to 5% with a dynamic strategy. See, this is where, who are these experts? Who are they? With a dynamic, that you, okay, let me, I don't know if you got this over in Sweden. All right, let me point this out. The, <clears throat> Sports and analysts, your ESPNs, your sports center. I don't know if you have that in Sweden, playing Lutvik stick or whatever the sports are over there. Uh, these experts in sports anal analysis are fraudulent. Even they know they're fraudulent. How do you analyze sports? You don't. It's a it's a talk show for low IQ males, washed up jocks to think there's some kind of sports or analysis to the sport they play back in high school, maybe college. All right. And then <clears throat> I was foolish. I too thought there was an analysis component to financial markets. And every morning when I worked overnight security, I'd wake up and I get the, it's called early bell, the early bell. This is back in the dot-com days. And Maria Bartiromo, who I presume is still around, her and the boys would, uh, you know, squawk box. That was the thing. And they'd analyze what's going on and they do this kind of analysis. You know what? It was all BS. It was all BS. Now, it's okay if you report news and what interest rates are and what's going on in the market. That's good news. But we're going to have Jim Cramer come in and analyze. Oh, we got this new strategy. No. <clears throat> the strategy will not work. No financial models will work long term because the dynamics, the underlying dynamics of the market is always changing. Human behavior is always changing. And so what we go back to is boring old... Um, uh, Warren Buffett stuff, the market will beat most investors. That's it. That's all you need to know. Spend less than you make. So I, I think what you need to do <clears throat> is ditch all the analysis. I don't know what a dynamic strategy is. Others say that growth in the future will be declining and a 25 to 3% withdrawal is realistic. This is no different than Dudley McDudson speculating whether the Cincinnati Bengals are going to make it to the NBA playoffs. All right? This is no different than um, you know, Fox News analysts or the Young Turks or CNN, you know, war course. We're going to analyze the war. Anyone analyzing the war is a moron. It should shut the F up, the Ukraine-Russian war. Right? So I don't care <clears throat> what these experts say. It is your personal choices and behaviors earlier on. Now, you've made some really good personal choices and behaviors. You got uh, an apartment that looks like paid off or a flat or a condo. You have $200,000 saved up in a, a retirement fund. That's good. Sweden, they pay for everything. So, I mean, you're okay there. And your women are just the most wonderful people ever on the planet. They're so loving and caring. You're good. You're fine. Um, <clears throat> know you're talking about this a lot too, as investment in the index is more of a hedge against inflation. We'll be interested to see if fire is going to work out the same way in the future, the fire enthusiasts had a nice ride in 2008 to 2022, so to speak. Looking for it. All right, so let me grab <clears throat> my spreadsheet, my little model I put together here and did this. So um, let me go through my methodology not to bore everyone. So you want a global uh, portfolio. What I did was take Morgan Stanley Capital International, which is the authoritative source in the world on having different indices throughout the globe. They've had a global uh, a world equity fund or uh, index and going back to 1970. So that's a lot of data. It's very impressive that they had that. And so what I did <clears throat> is I, I did everything in dollars so I could back out dollars or inflation. 
So we're looking at raw real stock growth here, real portfolio growth. So it, it doesn't, I adjusted for inflation in one country. We're talking the global real economic growth of a global portfolio. So it'd be the same real growth you had faced in Sweden or any other place for that matter. Um, although your currency relative to the globe would have an effect on this, but let's let's not worry about that for now. <clears throat> um, anyway, so I took global economic growth from the Morgan Stanley Capital International uh, World Index and the uh, uh, arithmetic, 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 arithmetic uh, average was eight and a fraction of one percent. Okay, let's just call it eight. I took that was in U.S. dollars, nominal. Then I went back to 1970. Took the arithmetic mean, arithmetic, I think that's the name. Uh, and to you know, 4.02 percent inflation, four percent. Okay. So out of the eight percent global economic growth, half was inflation. So the real global economic growth of the global portfolio is four percent. Now you can already do the math because it's kind of simple. All right. If you got a million bucks <clears throat> and you make 4% real, so we're because we're backing out inflation, right? Make 4% real. That's $40,000 or 400,000 krona. Uh, okay, so that you you draw that out, but your million dollars is going to make 4%, so that's $40,000. So the 4%, because global growth is 4% and it's the 4% rule, you never actually touch your capital, never touch your principal investment. Um, you live literally off the interest the entire time. So <clears throat> not only would the 4% rule work using a global thing, and I think the reason um, it would amortize down is because the traditional 401k, 4% uh, uh, rule includes some bonds. So this is a little bit more growth, real growth. Uh, but generally, in, in over 30 years, you'd still have your million dollars adjusted for inflation. It would still be a million dollars because I, I wanted to remove inflation from all this. Now, in your particular situation, <clears throat> um, you want to retire when you're 60. I said, how much do you need to live? You needed 240000 uh, Scandin Swedish krona, which is $24,000 US. And so I think I did it right here. Uh, nope, that's not it. I'm off. Let me try this, 425000 Okay. Does that come down to a zero balance? Yeah, that's about right. So what you need in total savings, uh, assuming you're going to liquidate everything, you will need a retirement account of $425,000 or 4.25 million krona in order for you to live off of your 240,000 krona per year using that global portfolio and the 4% rule. All right. You are at 200. Where are you? You're at $200,000 or 2 million. You need um, 4.2 million. So you need 2.25 million krona or $225,000 more than what you got saved up now. So you're 43, <clears throat> I'll do a little bit more math here, 60 minus 43 divided by, oh wait, 17, hang on, 225 divided by 17. You need to save up 13 grand or 130,000 krona per year uh, to get to that point, All right, which I think is doable, 13 grand a year, and especially now that you're going into your higher income earning uh, days and ain't no one get married in Sweden. So you don't have to worry about divorce or anything like that. You'll be fine. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you're on track. And then assuming you could keep that frugal living of 24,000 us dollars, 240,000 Krona. Uh, yeah, you should be able to do it. You should be able to do it. But the, uh, the larger point with, with oh, inflation, I think there was an article like the 4% rule won't work anymore. Because of inflation, it might have to be this percent rule. Da, 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 da. One, you don't control any of that. Uh, two, they're the talking heads. Uh, three, this is just a guideline. Uh, it is having good finances. Now, in your particular case, you got your condo, <clears throat> which already by now you have enough. Uh, like if you want to do a reverse mortgage, if you don't have kids, why not? There's no reason to leave any money to society. Uh, so you have enough right now that, yeah, by the time you're if, like, even if your, your investments didn't go up, uh, uh, 
they just maintain their value adjusting for inflation. You'd have enough that if you wanted to like um, liquidate your your condo, you would make it to ninety, assuming twenty four thousand dollars a year. Uh, but I would still add a little bit. Now that's only going to support you if you have your uh, apartment paid off. You're not paying rent, so that could probably be why you're at twenty four thousand dollars, which is pretty cheap to live anywhere in the first world. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna need four hundred twenty-five thousand U.S. dollars. Yep, and that brings you down to like ten thousand left by the time you're dead, and that's it. But <clears throat> the larger point, I'll, I'll just tell you this: I, I did take a little bit of notes. Okay, three things you can do to drastically. This would be my retirement plan, Cappy's retirement plan, which I I don't enumerate this necessarily in Bachelor Pad Economics or Poor Richard's retirement link below. But here are the three things that are more important than any kind of rule or financial advice, all right? First, minimalism. You you just don't need material stuff, man. If you do that, that's like 80%. You know, I was like, girls, how do I get a guy? 80% of it is just be thin. It really is, all right? So if you're a minimalist, you're not buying stupid things. You're not making foolish investments. You're going to be fine, all right? Number two thing, work past retirement. I know everyone thinks, oh, I'd love to retire early. You would think that for about three months. You're like, oh my God, I'm bored. Because the rest of the world is so bad with their money, they're all going to work till they're dead. It's not like there's a, but look, <clears throat> I will admit in the golf course or golfing community in Las Vegas or maybe Florida or Arizona, where you get a, cent uh, a centralized, intense, focused group of Vietnam veteran retired dudes. <laughs> which is almost all I exclusively golf with. Not because I'm like, oh, I won't I won't golf with anyone but Vietnam veteran retired dudes. It's because that's who's there. I, and thank God they're there. Like you almost would have to go to an early retirement community, uh, but there's not enough people to populate it. There is enough old boomers of Vietnam veterans, apparently, though, to populate retirement communities, including the golf courses. So when I have any, if there's any socializing I do during the daytime, it is golfing with guys who got at least 25 years on me. So unless you're going to get into the old timer community and you can't, there's this, there's this golf course in Henderson. I don't know why I didn't find it. It was in my backyard. <clears throat> well, not my backyard. Um, I went to this community. I'm like, my old man's got to retire. They got bocce ball. They got a pool hall. They got a lounge. They got a bar and a really nice golf course. Affordable golf too. I'm like, my dad's got to come here. Like, hey dad, there's, there's a, uh, there's what's an old woman's name. There's a, uh, there's Phyllis. Hey dad, Phyllis is giving you the eye, man. Yeah. she got all of her teeth too. All right. Yeah. Um, but you, you, had, you have to be, 50, I think, maybe even 65. I'm like, I can't join this awesome club. I want to join. I'm like, why? Come on. Should I get like honorable mention? I'm kind of retired, essentially. I'm like you guys. <clears throat> but unless you're going to participate in that community, uh, you're going to have to work past retirement because everyone else is. There's no, there's no social outings. And there's two people you can hang out with when you retire early. There's young people who don't have a career yet and they're living van life or they're climbing mountains or chasing tornadoes like the tornado chasing kid. Or there's Vietnam veterans. And, and you don't even have Vietnam veterans in Sweden because I don't know what you guys are doing in Vietnam. Whatever. You got your old fart equivalent, whatever old Viet, uh, uh, Swedish people do. I don't know. Make furniture, work at Ikea, whatever. All right. So that's, that's another phase. You're just going to have to work past retirement. And that drastically improves your ability to retire because you're getting you're, you're killing two three birds technically with one stone one you're not taking away from your retirement amount you're adding to it or at least keeping it uh consistent stable you're not it's not going down uh, you're not withdrawing from your retirement accounts two you're you're getting closer and closer to your death date so you need less and less money to live whenever that inevitable death date is and so uh, aside from being a minimalist, the number two thing you can do is work past retirement, even if it's part time, even if it's, if it's part time, just just keep because and, and three, it's going to be good for your mental health. Uh, the suicide has a little jump now and for guys, it's a big jump because we're just better at execution because, you know, we don't do it half ass. We do nothing half ass. 
We want results, damn it. Um, unfortunately, is a, a bump in um, self-deletion uh, after retirement because you just have nothing else to do. So retirement is death. You, you don't want to do that. And then the third thing what was the third thing. Uh, stay healthy. Don't be fat. It's not exciting. Look, not being fat is almost as important as I'd say is your 401k. It is. You know. Although I guess if you're going to be like Cat Paws, the fat activist and fat professor who died at 32 because she was fat, I guess you don't have to worry about retirement planning then, now do you? <laughs> Tess Holiday, sweetheart, if you're contributing to an IRA, just stop. Just just stop. Give the money to your kids. Maybe they'll go do something with it. Uh, you don't you don't have to you don't have to save for retirement, Tess. You're <clears throat> you will not be crossing that bridge. Um so yeah, and those are the three things you can do. Uh, otherwise, the four percent rule, I'd have to go read up on what they're why they're saying or what you got to do because of lower uh, stock market growth, less work, more lazy people, less corporate profits. Uh, so you have to decrease it to two point five to three percent. Okay, maybe that works. Um, I don't know if it's got to be more nominal terms because of inflation. I always like to back out inflation so I can just look at obvious numbers. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's generally a good rule, but Hey, how about you follow my three rules first? Minimalism work past retirement, be healthy. <clears throat> and then the rule almost doesn't matter. You'll be like, Oh yeah, I got enough money. I'm fine. Oh, by the way, take a look at the two books linked below and consider taking my course, achieving financial excellence. It's linked below. It's through teachable. If you want to find it, you can search for the Clary School of Economic Philosophy on Teachable. And then if you follow that, if you follow that and nothing statistically odd happens to you, like you get crippled in a car accident, your finances will be fine. You won't have. Would you like to not worry about money again? Take my course, Achieving Financial Excellence. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. It was a short, I had a talker. I had a talker in anger management today. Talk, talk, talk. And I'm like, one of the things they teach you is if you're angry in an environment to remove yourself from the environment. And I was getting angry at anger management. Like, I'm going to get out of here. And I went and I bought pizza instead because today's cheat day. Ray John, hey, Ray John, where have you been, man? How are you? You out of school and everything? Oh, my gosh. Look at blast from the past. Five Canadian do uh, dollars. <clears throat> COVID death rates are higher in Trump counties than Biden counties. Should have been pro-mask and pro-vaccine. By the way, Aaron, you're a tool. Thanks for the five bucks. I'm not a tool. I'm happy to see you. Apparently, you're not happy to see me. Uh, ram Ramerator. Tree fitty. I pity the fool that seal my tree fitty. Loch Ness Monster. Driving back from the Twin Cities. I'm like, oh, oh it's coming up because the mile marker. Because South Dakota, I think, is 400, 421 miles long. And Tree Fitty. It's just past Sioux Falls. Tree Fitty. Roger Schaefer, five bucks. Just listening to Cappy and working from home. By the way, why are you called Cappy? Um, because my blog, which I started in 2004, that's how I got here, is CaptainCapitalismUpBlogspot.com. You can go there. It's still there. I haven't written something in months uh, because the, the YouTubes have taken over and my house, which is kind, kind of coming to a close now after I put in retaining walls. And then guys just, some guys called me Cappy Cap instead of Cappy Capitalism. And then people just started calling me Cappy. And now I've been past two restaurants called Cappy and I don't have a picture of either, which I should have gotten. There's one down by the island, Balboa Island in LA. And there's another one somewhere else that I forget. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Equivocal systems, five bucks. Aaron, how far behind are you? It's been three weeks. I'm waiting to get, waiting for you to get to mine. Unless I missed it already, I should go back to work. Um, Three weeks, that's concerning because I'm only about a week behind. 
when did uh, equivocal email me? Uh, let me know what it was like the title or something. Yeah. Three weeks is too much. That's that's I must have missed it. Did you email me at Cappy capitalism at yahoo.com or did you go through asshole consulting.com like you were supposed to? But yeah, hit me up. Three weeks is, is way more than that. 42. I thought I thought it was 33 or something like that. I thought it was 30s. 40 million years of being alone. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, Aubrey on fire, $2.79 Canadian. Where have you been for two days? Hiking? <laughs> you all think you own me. What did I do for two days? I picked rocks out of my yard because uh, I have to burn a patch of it so I can put it and seed it down with seed. I seeded some bald spots in my yard. I had to rake it up first by hand. And yard is not really, it's it's like an acre. It's an acre. Um, I did some measuring for the retaining walls. I, what did I do? I did go for a short hike, a two mile hike yesterday. I have to get some exercise. I did a podcast. I've been working. It hasn't been a lot of relaxation and fun. I get like maybe, maybe an hour a day of video games and relaxation in. Beforehand, it was none, which is why when I fired up my Xbox One, it took two days to update because there was like eight gazillion gigabytes of updates to do. Uh, I think we're caught up. I think we're caught up. <clears throat> All right, there you guys go. All right, we'll see you guys later. Toodles.